Mokan closed their eyes. The humans had only arrived on Espira around a week ago. Still, their arrival shook the planet. The Federation made an announcement and Mokan couldn't believe it. There was the Premier and an alien. Shaking hands, waving on television. Many other countries felt threatened by this until the humans started establishing relations with them as well. However, the humans seemed eager to maintain good relations with the Federation in particular. It was of no surprise to Mokan. The Federation was the wealthiest nation on the planet and military strong. What surprised Mokan was the lack of unity on what to do next. Many in the Federation wanted to join the human coalition, however many countries disagreed. It was just like Epiphanes to fight over the stupidest things. Still, the Federation agreed to join the coalition. That's where Mokan takes place. Mokan opened their eyes and began traveling down the hall. They were meeting up with a human military entourage and learn about what exactly humanity wanted from them. As Mokan approached the door, they slowed. They were nervous to meet an alien for the first time in person. However, being a career military epiphoran, they were used to being uncomfortable. They shrugged and opened the door. Immediately, Mokan saw large groups of humans in clean uniforms. The humans may look ugly, but their uniforms are amazing. Mokan then saw the rest of High Command of the Federation preparing to sit as well. In between the two sides was a long mahogany table. The chairs were etched with the finest craftsmanship only a week before, with etches indicating a new era and epipheran alien cooperation. As Mokan approached their side of the table, they glanced at the humans again. There was one who wore a fancier uniform than the rest and seemed much more confident. Mokan concluded that this must be the person who would lead the human side of the conversation. Mokan took their seat next to Commanding Marshal Jofa. Jofa would be leading the talks for the Epipherans. Other political advisers and diplomats were also present. Mokan found it odd that it was a military-led conversation, but figured it must be because the Premier and human delegation had already spoken much. Perhaps the humans wished to learn the other cogs of the Federation government. Jofa was widely respected among the military community of the Federation and her allies. They were popular for the liberation of Jargon, a city that was under the oppression of the Maze during the Weak War. They were also known for their kindness and patriotism for the Federation. Under their rule of the military, the service got shorter, the injuries became less, the harassment less as well. The room got quiet as chattering died down and everyone took their seats. Mokan looked around. It was crazy how fast an atmosphere can change. From friendly and vibrant, the room had turned serious and tense. Mokan could smell fear sent from some of the high command, hoping that the humans didn't notice. Mokan didn't want the Federation to look weak. Yofa seemed to be thinking this as well, as Yofa peered directly in the area where the fear scent permeated. However, as the humans gave little reaction, Yofa decided to ignore it. Yofa sat straight now and looked at the human across, who was the fancier human Mokan noticed earlier. Yofa and the human seemed to be clashing silently in their minds, eyes. It made Mokan a bit nervous. Linguists sat on the other side of each main diplomat and military officer. They were tasked to learn each other's languages quickly and efficiently. Yofa began speaking. So, I know the Premier has spoken to you. It is my understanding that you are currently in charge of your nation, known as the Descendant Empire. Is that correct? As Jofa finished speaking, the linguist on their side of the table began translating for the humans. After the linguist finished, the person on the other side tensed. The human made some noises with their mouth. Mokan made no sense of it but it seemed every human was listening to them intently. The linguist on their side, a human with long brown hair and dark skin, began translating, The Commandant confirms what you said. They said it is more complex than that, but it will be a viable explanation for now. Jofa looked annoyed. I want the full explanation. We can't build a relationship of trust when we don't know the full extent of your issues. The Epipheran linguist took the initiative here, translating for the humans. The human military officer seemed annoyed as well. They began responding. 
The human linguist then said to Yofa, The Commandant says it is a long story. However, in short, a civil war was sparked in the once great interstellar empire of the Descendants. Now the government we're under is in control of two star systems, the most successful ones. Yofa seemed to accept this explanation for now, backing off a bit. This time, they gave the human a chance to speak first. The human made noises with their mouth. The Epipheran linguist looked toward Jofa. The human wishes to know if we are truly a sexless species. Jofa looked amused for the first time in this meeting. Well, go on then, tell them, they said to the linguist. The linguist twitched their tentacle and spoke to the humans. The humans looked a bit shocked and gave some glances to each other in their peripheral. As the tension in the room diffused, Mokan felt themselves slump in their seat a little. At least no one would attack each other any time soon. The meeting soon devolved into curious questions about each other's species. What was the culture like? Are they united, are they divided, and so forth? However, Mokan noticed an underling enter. All heads turned slowly and sick. Their conversation was seemingly cut short. The underling pulled out a sidearm from their clothing and pulled it on Yoffa. Mokan gaped and got up from their chair, moving to push Yoffa out of the way. However, Mokan noticed multiple human officers get up and tackle the underling. The gun shot once, and the underling was on the floor. Yoffa fell out of their chair. Yelling began around the room as a human officer began to repeatedly punch the underling who was struggling. His counterparts began to pull the human officer off the underling as Mokan knelt down to help Yofa. The problem was, Yofa was losing a lot of fluids. A lot. The world became slow as Mokan attempted to stop the fluid loss. Jofa was visibly struggling, but didn't seem as conscious. More like an animal desperately struggling for life. Mokan refused to believe it, though. Mokan took a split second to look up at the perpetrator. The underling was fully subdued now, with the humans having taken the gun and put their appendages in some sort of restraints. They were effective and quick. As Mokan focused on the scene over there, they felt a sudden stop of movement from where their hands were placed. Mokan slowly looked down at Joffa. There was no movement. None at all. Joffa instead wore an expression of rage, fear, and disgust. Mokan just stared. The door burst open as armed Epipheran guards entered. They swept the room swiftly, weapons drawn. They then rest their eyes on the apprehended underling and the body of Yofa. They loosened their stance among seeing this, but moved forward to take the underling into custody. Some of the other guards and paramedics approached Yofa. Mokan got up and stepped back, letting the paramedics do their job. It was too late, though. They began resuscitation techniques after clearing Yofa's airways and checking for vitals. Mokan looked at their soaked hands, which were covered in the commanding marshal's fluid. As a wheeler came in, they put Yofa on it. The only difference between Yofa and an injury was the bag they were putting over them. It was disturbing to Mokan. An era of the Federation had just been abruptly cut short. A new one was beginning. And Mokan feared it. The unprecedented change would cause ripples in the world. And ripples turn into waves.